Hello everyone, thank you for coming back and joining me on the channel today is Robert Nugent. You'll know him well by now. He has his own channel, Decrevy, Determined to be Catholic. And you can find him there, at the Catholic Man is his tagline. Robert, it's great to have you back again. You've been busy with many videos and I'm due to catch up on a few after some recent trips and conferences. How have you been? Yeah. I've been well, I've been busy, you know, family stuff, work. We're, we're doing a big walk to cross four days in September uh, into Dublin with a Eucharistic procession in Dublin. So it's we're, we're busy preparing that. And I was up Crow Patrick for the third time this summer last Saturday with the Human Life International Men's uh, Pilgrimage. So caught caught doing lots of stuff very busy at the moment and uh, you know uh, enjoying life and not as busy as you but um, <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> yeah i've been busy enough it'd be good to get back into a routine now i did see some videos pop up obviously because the day i was given a public talk was august 15th uh we know it's the the day of the assumption i know they say the solemnity uh, yeah solemnity yeah more than the feast sometimes, I keep forgetting that. But I was telling people, you know, when I was speaking about the apparitions and Akita, Sister Sasagawa's not in a good uh, state apparently, we have to pray for her, she's getting prepared to go for her eternal reward. Little did I know that she was passing away around about the same time on that day. And a few videos mm. have popped up, it seems to be a bit of a mystery or mixed reports of what's happening to her body. Um, people are very much in shock. Either it's cremated or it's going to medical science. It's back and forth. No one knows for sure the secrecy surrounding it all and um, everything else. But regardless, people seem to be a little bit of a shock of it all, of how it's been dealt with. But then at the same time, it's given rise also to Our Lady of All Nations, which is a video mm -hmm. I have done a few years ago, I would need to revise over it again. I do have a friend up in Scotland who is friends with that community over in Amsterdam. And yeah, uh, yeah I just need to revise it again because I know it took a bit of a, a wobbly there with the Vatican. It's been back and forth with bishops to the Vatican and now before the new rules come into play with the apparition criteria that the, the one... In Amsterdam, Our Lady of All Nations wasn't seen as supernatural, I think that was the case. But I think when you see what's happening with the link of Akita, the statue that wept 101 times, which was significant in itself, the statue was the statue of Our Lady of All Nations. And a lot of people don't know this, and I'm waiting to get word back from Garabandal, because when I was there a few years ago, the exact same replica statue is also in the Garabandal Information Centre, the exact same yeah. one that looks in Akita. And I, I, my memory isn't serving me correctly to know whether it's the from the same person that made them or if there's another link somehow with Akita. But the fact that the exact same model is in both, uh, I found significant as well. But Our Lady of All Nations gets brought up again because the fact that out of... Any statue or painting or even a Eucharistic miracle that the Lord could have done back then in Akita in front of the witnesses, the same blood and tears that Bishop Ito get tested. Why did God choose that statue known from all eternity where the Vatican would be ruling on it these days? Why use that yeah. one? Is that a sign, do you think, that maybe... That is yeah, well, if you look at the timeline of of what has happened okay so 1973 you have the three messages in Akita. so we have to just dial back and look at the timeline we have the three messages in Akita. we have the blood coming out of the right hand of the statue and then sister agnes's left hand has the stigmata so you've 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 you know that phenomenon that was happening in 1973 1974 the vatican issues a recommendation 
to the bishop in Amsterdam that uh, the apparition of Our Lady of All Nations or the 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 messages that he would rule constat de non supernaturalitate. Now we didn't know this at the time. We didn't know it last number of years. We've only known it recently because Cardinal Fernandez released the information that was released in 1974. So. Um, because in his press conference, and this was a very good press conference on the new discernment process, he mentioned in the past, bishops would go to Rome, ask for guidance. Rome would give their guidance, but they would say to the bishop, look, you can't use this guidance in your um, when you're ruling on, a, <clears throat> on an apparition. So the bishop in Amsterdam at the time ruled constat de non supernaturalitate that it's uh, he that that, it, that 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 they they could say it wasn't supernatural so they ruled on that in 1974 in 1975 early 1975 uh, that same statue that was weeping blood from the hand that the, the, the was blood coming from the hand started to cry in um in uh akita i'm just bringing up the dates i have them i i did a, a research on all the dates uh, I'll just bring them up here. I think it was, uh, if it was a mistake, the uh, third of third um, of January or, or early January nineteen seventy five. Uh, and I'm near sure. Yeah, Keisha, here I have it done. Ah, I have to, I have to get in. But anyway, uh, it was early January nineteen seventy five when when uh, it started crying, and then it cried hundred and one times until the fifteenth of September nineteen eighty one. Uh, some days it cried multiple times a day, you know, a few times, and there was sometimes it cried a lot of tears, but it was 101 times, and after which, um, you know, uh, Sister Agnes's guardian angel told her the significance of the 101 times, uh, talking about Genesis 3.15. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of connectivity between Our Lady of Amsterdam. It's, it's almost as if, you know, Our Lady's crying for the fact that you haven't recognized my call you know peter says to um christ says to peter who do you say i am uh you know he, and, and uh, he, he asked the question and our lady is also saying to the church who do you say i am you know what is her mission in heaven all of the dogmas that we've pronounced so far the first marian dogmas are are really about her life on earth you know the the last one being the assumption the fifth marian dogma is about what is her role in heaven what what who do we say mary is and we have to acknowledge her in order in order for for you know her her work to be to be accepted in the church and it all ties back to our lady of all nations if you read those messages that apparition the prayer um but sadly the church uh, you know has ignored this so far so i i, I really do think I really do think it's all playing out at this moment in time. The messages in Akita, the the uh, what you call the uh, um, 1974 uh, uh, constat the non supernaturalitate that came from the uh, the Vatican to the bishop, and then uh, when the, the the statue started crying, 1975, early 1975, uh, you know, it's it's all connected in together, and. Um, it is it is a statue of Our Lady of All Nations, and you know when the dossier went to Rome about that phenomenon, when Bishop Ito went to Rome with the dossier, because like the Vatican were dragging their feet for so long, they weren't you know giving direction on on the phenomenon. When he went to Rome and met with Cardinal Ratzinger, which did happen, you know Cardinal Ratzinger said, "Well, the messages it, it's like it's it's like the third secret of Fatima." Yeah. And that's that's nobody's nobody has refuted that. Um, but you know, as Cardinal Fernandez said in his press conference, the guidance that the Vatican was given, the bishops were not allowed to talk about it or say, "Well, I had a meeting." They weren't allowed to say it. So of course, <laughs> you know, we're, it's hard to get uh, corroboration uh, on that meeting. But he just didn't go with a few pages. He went with you know scientific 
studies on the tears, on the blood, and the number of times it cried, and the person of Sister Agnes, on the messages, etc., etc., etc. It was a very in-depth investigation. And you know, the Japanese are not some type of people that should just let things wash. You know, they're very thorough. And I've worked with Japanese. They're very thorough, um, yeah. ordered people. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very stark uh, message and it's a very stark warning for the world um, and for the church. Uh, and, it, and I think it firmly ties in with the fact that we, in a, in a sad way, you know, the church doesn't want to go into this area of another dogma because they said, oh, it's a further wedge between us and our separated brethren between Protestants and between Orthodox, right? This is where, the you know, we don't need another Marian dogma. We've got already too many, you know, why did we even need the Immaculate Conception? Why do we even need the, the assumption? We didn't need to declare these dogmas, but, you know... <laughs> We, we the Catholic Church is, is supposed to lead. It's not supposed to toe the line uh, and compromise. And what we have now in the church is just compromise. Key word. Uh, Kita. And it comes out of Kita. Yeah, exactly. Look, you know, fiducia supplicants. Compromise. I, I, I textbook, textbook compromise. Some people say, oh, look, church dogma didn't change. Nothing changed with fiducia supplicants. Why were we even talking about it? It's a... Uh, you know, marriage is marriage between a man and a woman. But, I mean, I mean, it's a compromise document. It is, you know, it's, it took a lot of people to, to come around to it, you know, and um, it, wasn't, it was, wasn't needed and it was badly written. And, you know, pushing the dogma of the fifth marrying dogma under the carpet is a compromise. We don't want further theological barriers between orthodox between protestants you know protestants say we worship too much mary we have too much marian devotion but mary just wasn't auxiliar to she wasn't some redundant woman that gave birth to our lord and then you know we oh there you are to one side you know she she is key in the history of redemption and she's key in the church's mist in the church's mission today and she's asking the church who do you say i am you know, she yeah. is co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and uh, advocate for humanity. Uh, and sh we should acknowledge her as such. That's my thoughts on it anyway. Yeah. Just as you said that there, actually, I've got up a slide from a talk I gave, and it's a quote from Bruno from Trefontane Apparitions. Uh, I'll get the right one up here. Have I got the screen share one? This was meant to be the screen. Ah, there. I've just got it in front of the, the other one for a second. But March 13th, 2000, down the bottom here. My children, salvation is not bringing together all religions to make them a cluster of heresies and mistakes, but to convert them in the unity and love, unity of love and faith. Now, the reason that stands out for me and why I've got a star next to March 13th because that, that was the day Pope Francis was elected Pope. And this bringing together religions, I think of that Abu Dhabi agreement and things, you know, they're bringing them all together, the Abrahamic religions. But if you look back even before, like Malachi Martin, who's a third secret reader of Fatima, if you go back even further, like to the earliest popes, Pope Pius X and all them, they all spoke about modernism, been the, the, the sum of all heresies and you look at this modern day as well and everything that's coming with it they'd rather compromise than in a way of not taking in that vacuum of grace and following God's will and recognising the identity of Mary the Queen yeah. fully yeah. but yeah. keeping their eyes on the world and on this diplomatic dialogue and all the rest of it this is where it's come to the point where we need to keep losing our identity of being fulfilled in it in order to compromise and keep everyone happy and together as best we can, which I think is just treading water in a, on a sinking ship. I think that's what's really happening with the Catholic Church in many ways right now. And that other one on the screen, if I can get it back up here, September 21st, 1988, I pray that I have... I pray what I have dreamed will never happen. It is too painful, and I hope the Lord will not allow the Pope to deny all the truths of the faith, 
to put himself in place of God. How much pain I felt that night, my legs became paralysed and I could no longer move for the pain which I felt when I saw the church reduced to a mass of ruins. Now what gets me there is that it links with Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich about the church in ruins as well as many others from Marie Julia Jehenny and other mystics. But the bit is try, I'm trying to work out there that he prays that the Pope won't put himself in place of God. What on earth could that be that the Pope would put himself in place of God? And I've got this one here that we know from, it's came up a couple of times, we've got the source at the bottom, thanks to Michael Garabindal. And it's Father Yasuda, who was spiritual director to Sister Sasagawa, and he's put on here his quote, Like the first Judas, the last Pope will sell Jesus to the enemy. Therefore the era of Antichrist Pope will soon come. Therefore, we must properly defend our faith. At this time, the weapons left to us are the rosary and the sign left by her Holy Son. Now, as the first I've really ever came across the, the saying that's finally there, the Antichrist Pope, because we know in the last election, she says Rome would lose the faith and become, of the, become the seat of the Antichrist. That was centuries ago. We're talking Vatican at the Rome even though the Vatican's its own sovereign nation, are we talking somewhere else in Rome? Because Anne Catherine Emmerich speaks about when it is a mass of ruins and they're rebuilding, they're rebuilding like a false one next to it, or was it part of it? I can't remember, but it was going to be full of heresies and people from all sorts trying to get all the way in it, and that's when St. Michael had to come down and defend it. So there's a lot of symbolism there, the fact that what's, what's crumbling away and what's getting filled in, and right now, I'm I'm starting to see more and more of the light that for the last 60 plus years, there's definitely a watering down of something that's clear Catholic identity. And we've lost a sense of what it truly is, you know, like in its pure authenticity. And I think this infiltration of the church is real. I think um, the Darnell's very much in with the, the harvest. And we just need the harvester to come. But you're hearing it from Bruno and Tre and I know you spoke to the Lady Yolanda. She's been in touch. I'm hoping to get her on in a week or so. I remember her saying in a video that Bruno told her that one day she'd be the Protestant in the church. And she thought he meant, I don't want to lose my faith. And he says, no, you'll be Protestant to keep the faith. Wow. So there's something coming in to the point where the Catholic identity has been eradicated piece by piece, step by step, slowly but surely. And I've done a video with the Fabian Society, with Keir Stammer, the Davos tyrant, as I call him now, and anyone that's been involved in politics through the Labour especially. It's the, she the, L the logo is the wolf in sheep's clothing, and it's the tortoise walking over the city, and it's to correct the mistakes of Marxism communism and socialist stuff the hare and the tortoise race and that's where Marxism went wrong and how it's step by step to get it correct so whether you call it socialism or communism Lucia of Fatima as well as the Garabindal visionaries both spoke about how communism would return in fact it would engulf the world Yeah, yeah. and I see that as that's not the, years ago people said it was the Chinese that were going to take over the world it's the World Economic Forum, it's the United Nation, it's this one world government, and this is why they're working with the Catholic Church, being the size of it and the wealth of it, is the fact that that's your one world religion. And right now we're at the Abrahamic religions, and we'll see what comes next. But it's at the cost of the Catholic identity, and heaven has been repeatedly telling us, especially through Our Lady, this is not what God wants. Yeah. So how do yeah. you say that to Catholics and bishops that are working on it? <laughs> I know, but this is this is. Uh, I mean, all of these prophecies, the La Salette prophecy. You know, a lot of people said, "Oh no, that's fake. That's fake. That they never said that." And and then with this Akisha prophecy, they're probably, you know, say, "Okay, well, that's how could we trust this priest? Is this really what she said? It wasn't mentioned in 1973." Uh, it's it's hard to, it's hard to uh, you know not question 
what has gone on in the church. You know, it's 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 very very hard not to question, especially when you see what's going on in in, in Europe, uh, where the the church is just step back and 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 hasn't taken a uh, you know a strong role uh, in, in defending the truth uh, and oftentimes they just they they they're just not able to i mean have the moral high ground given the, the the failings that they've had over the last few decades you know this has happened in Ireland you know the, there's very very meek in actually standing up and saying look we don't believe in euthanasia we don't believe in abortion uh, they'll issue press conferences or press releases and they'll publish them on websites but actually being out there front and center and and defending the faith as a pastor should as a leader should most of them won't you know they they uh, uh, you know a lot of our bishops and this is this is the, the truth. A lot of our bishops will spend actually more time physically with Protestant ministers than they would with actually, say, a pro-life movement or a, you know, we spend more so much time on ecumenism, ecumenism, which, okay, important, but okay, but our, our country at the moment is being flooded by uh, immigrants thousands you know a, a priest gets stabbed by a radicalized muslim immigrant mm -hmm. uh, and that's not me inventing it that's not um, um gossip that's what was on our national media you know they put out a, 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 a teenager who'd been radicalized on uh, online by muslim you know militants uh, stabbed um, a catholic priest did he stab him because he was catholic did he stab him because he was a uh, he was a chaplain in the military um, our army hasn't been involved in any war we're peacekeepers so why why would you come at us well you know I, the questions have to be asked uh, and you know the, the pope has said for example it's a sin if we put up barriers against uh, migration a sin this is what he said and yet when i lived in rome in the 1990s there were no barriers up if i wanted to walk into saint peter's you know i could just walk in the only maybe security there might be somebody at the door and say leave your bag down below but there was no uh, there was no x-rays there was no <coughs> security it was you know pretty much open door to walk into saint peter's this was in the early 1990s today you have to queue for God knows how long to walk, get into St. Peter's and to get into other basilicas around Rome because they're targets for who? You know, um, and I don't know how this will play out in the long run, but it seems like we have, we don't stand up for our faith, our our culture, our values. Uh, you know, we, we prefer to, you know, give into abortion. 10,000 abortions here in Ireland every year will you know our pop we used in 2010 we used to have 70,000 kids under the age of 12 months in the latest census it's around 50,000 kids under the age of 12 months that's a drop of 20,000 in 14 years why because you know they're, they're not a priority you know our teenagers are you know uh, social media university work uh, maybe get married and then at the end we might have kids when i'm in my 30s because uh, and, and when they do have kids they're farmed off to so crashes and childminders and you know and then we're wondering why we have this wave of depression why we have this wave of uh, loneliness why we have this wave of of uh, substance abuse we've never had so high substance abuse in the history of this country ever you know we thought alcohol was bad well you should see what people are taking today uh, and this is because we have we have we have buried our religion in Ireland, our yeah. faith has been totally decimated. It is uh, when I look around. What are the values of the under forties? Well, they're definitely not Catholic values. You know, Catholic values. The the the, the values of uh, of the new Irish are um, sorry. The values of the new Irish are are, are not are not those of of, of the church. So, um, uh, I still love so, Ireland, though. I mean, the Irish remnant are strong. I love everything about Ireland and the history. And I know I've told you before, and everyone else, 
71% Irish in the DNA. I got it uh, tested. But there's some great yeah. remnant over there. You know, like I've met a couple of people through yourself. There's a few things going on. Um, I'd love to get back over again and see it all because I, I think, as our friend Thomas Gallagher said, you know, how Our Lady of Knock and even Marino Restrepo, who I spoke to again recently, said years ago that how the apparition of Knock isn't about the history in the past. Knock is for the future. Why? Yeah. And I still haven't got the answer from him directly, <laughs> but I believe more and more as I've come to learn of Knock through the help of Thomas and others and looking into things myself. When you look into the cycles, and this is what Francis Hogan got me into a few months ago, it's that itch that I'm still trying to find to scratch. I need to learn more about the Jubilee cycles, the eras, this era of peace that Our Lady's talking about. You know, like the new, of that, the new outpouring of the Holy Spirit, as John Paul II called it, or people are now going into Louisa Picaretta, the divine will. Well, first impression, and that's all I have, is that regardless of the name, it all points to something that Our Lady's planning for, where humanity and God are going to be as close as they could be to the time of creation, because that's what God intended all along. And when Satan came in at the beginning to thwart the plans, that's where he says in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and she will crush your head. You'll lie in wait and I'll bruise her heel. But I just like the part she says she, she'll crush your head. Yeah. The recent interview I had with Peter, Dr. Peter Howard, he was big in Guadalupe, and I remember having a, a Mexican priest discuss everything and the symbolism of the, the Telma and the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which was phenomenal detail. Everything from the gold bracelet to the tying. Uh, to certain emblems, the fact the yeah. sun was behind her, the moon on her feet, you know, there is so much detail. And NASA themselves have put so much scientific um, tests and everything into that as well. It's a phenomenal thing to learn. But that aside, on top of it, even you've got the fact that how she appeared there when she appeared and the Reformation was going on in Europe, here we come to Mexico. And that's where yeah. the spirit moved to get the, the numbers up. You know, we lost about 8 or 9 million in Europe. We get 8 or 9 million in the Americas. Yeah. But there was yeah. a crusade at the point where, as they went over there, because the way Peter Howard described Huatasupe, whatever the Aztec would have called it, it literally translates as the, one, the woman who crushes the serpent. Yes. yes. So... We need a crusade back to Europe as well as the world. And I think, whether we call it Our Lady of All Nations or just Our Lady, Our Blessed Mother, the Queen of Heaven and Earth, we need that where she's not just coming to one land that has a culture of uh, idolatry, of human sacrifices, of like a culture of death, uh, but actually to find God, the true God, the truth. And all it took yeah. over there was a tilma. What she's got in place now, like she says in Medjugorje, I will, fill, I will fulfill here what I began in Fatima. My imagined yeah. heart will triumph. She's leading us towards something um, that's going to be, to say it would be biblical, would be an understatement, I believe. Because even um, Maria Esperanza, the stigmatist mystic woman in South America, apparently said it's not just going to be Garabandal or Medjugorje that's going to have these permanent signs. It's going to be all the apparition sites, or most of them at least. It's going to be Akita in Japan or ones in the Philippines. I know she's. A, a, we got a t shirt when we were at the conference, a lady about the one that designed it herself, Our Lady on World Tour. And it looks yeah. like a concert t-shirt. And on the back, you see hundreds and hundreds of apparitions. Uh, hundreds in Italy, hundreds in France, all over. Different years, yeah. even this past century. It's phenomenal stuff. But I just, the, what I want to go back to for a second is the timing of everything. Because God's always given us the details if we're paying attention. He's not secretive. He just does it in his own way, and it's like I, I think sometimes he entertains himself when we get excited when we find things. I think he, he gets entertained with us. But of all the time, Sister Sasagawa was, was quiet since 
the, the 70s, 81 maybe, I think was the date. Yeah. But she was silent, she was quiet for decades. And then the first time she speaks out of having another message from her guardian angel was the same week that led into the Pachamama stuff. That's no coincidence, that's a God incidence for sure. And another th point of where the church is going one way and God's saying, you need to come back this way. And then, of all the time that she had to pass away, she had to pass away in the same week that Louisa Picaret as cause of canonization is underway, the Neil Lobstat and Divine Will. Just, if that's not, I mean, again, I don't get into Divine Will too much yet, but if that's not enough timing within a few days apart after all the, these years and decades, but it's also in 2024, towards the yeah. last quarter of... And you know when watching this channel why 2024 is so important, because we've got it coming down here, if I move this slide over, why... Oh, I'm going to mess this up, aren't I? But basically 2024, 2025, why? Because all of them go to 25, which goes back to marie Julie Jeheny. She, for me, right now is the icing on the cake. She concurs with the last select in the prophecies. Garabin dials four more popes. marie Julie Jeheny spoke about how the time would come when the Queen of England would pass. The new sovereign and the throne of England would see the relationship between the UK, Israel and Persia, which is your modern day Iran and all the other surrounding nations. We're seeing all that. And 2024 has been that, is this pivotal year. So 2025 is certainly going to be an interesting one for sure, I believe, in terms of what we're seeing. We're seeing things brewing up now and they're deliberately trying to bring away our culture. And yeah, these, these globals. You know, someone sent me a video today. Irish police advertising for recruitment in Pakistan. I don't know how true that is, but I was going to say it cannot be true, man. Sure, <laughs> I was on I was on X uh, that concerned citizens. And someone sent me that, but I never. I was too busy working trying to get onto it. But you know, what? I actually sent a photo back to my friend that sent that. I says, I was sitting in the, the vehicle, I took a picture right in front of me, big Palestinian flag 20 feet away, a big mosque, and I just came out of a Muslim family's house, I got a big tray of chocolates, smaller ba box of chocolates, and I told her I was into the, she was making all the food for the, the shelter, a woman's shelter, I says, you need to give me the recipes. She gave me, she said, no, I'll do better. She said, get your chicken, you put this in and then you do this. She gave me two bags of spices in her own Tupperware. I was like, come on, come on. And then I go to another business job that I had to do. A guy owned his own, like, uh, restaurant. He says, take something from the menu. And <laughs> you see what he gave me. <laughs> it's like, you're getting these videos and you're seeing how all bad it is and all that. And I was like, if this is how we make peace, I'm happy with this. <laughs> I was stuffed today. The food I received, the gifts, all from the Muslims, all from good yeah. like Muslim families. And um, I think there's something that about around the table, the food, the culture. And I'm like, see when you see all those riots, grab yourself a pot of this homemade food I'll walk down with you and we'll just make peace. <laughs> <laughs> but something Andrew Tate said, and I, I'm not one for making him a saviour, although he makes a lot of sense with things and he's, the way he gives it out. We need to stop being divided on our level between each other. We're all in the same boat when it comes to looking after our families, caring for our families, yeah. sorting out our bills, trying to survive. It's the puppet masters that's making it this way. And that's yeah. the puppet masters controlling everything, including this agenda with the world and the church. And I, I believe it's what Our Lady's um, warned us about for so long. I'm sure she said in the early days of Medjugorje, you know, humanity is walking on a path where it's going to see itself becoming its own creator and denying God. Yeah, yeah, it's already it's done true. that. And but why is Bruno yeah. saying that message about how the Pope would replace himself as God? Yeah. What's going to happen? Is that the consensus demanded of them that Anne Catherine Emmerich saw? Yeah. What do you think? It's very hard, it's very hard to talk about the Pope um, because... 
I mean, I find it extremely differ difficult because anytime you have an opinion, you say, well, look, I don't really understand. You get people write to me, oh, you're anti-Pope, you're, you're clickbait, you're uh, Taylor Marshall-esque, you're uh, this, you're that. I said, I, I mean, can we, can Catholics not have legitimate questions? Can, can we just not, you know, pose a little bit of questions here about what is going on can we can we you know probe a little bit and I, and I don't think there's anything in the catholic faith that says catholics are not allowed to ask questions about what the pope does and says you know with respect and there's a lot of times i, I ask the question what is going on in rome what like seriously what is going on in rome from the pachamama i just put my head hands in my head and i said you put two statues on a blanket in the in the, in, in the vatican gardens and you walked around in your circle and you prostrated yourselves you know you did it's, I, I mean and, and you just didn't think it was going to cause uh questions to the world you just not think oh no that's not going to look like idolatry at all no 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 okay. we had you know it really did cause a lot of catholics to do a double take and then we saw a document come out in in in, in i mean we've seen a lot of stuff this this synodal process this synodal process which you know most catholics are agnostic to or just don't understand or won't get involved you know the, the, this listening church you know the, they start this synodal process and then they did a survey to the world's bishops on the Latin Mass before this nodal process, but they won't reveal those results to us. You know, it's they went and asked the bishops, you know, about the traditional Latin Mass. They won't reveal those results. They had no consultation with Catholics about, you know, laity about. And then they went ahead and 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 banned that. But then they go on, oh, we're we're a synodal church. It's a rebranding of the church. It is what Father Gobi says in his blue book. It is the false church before our eyes. Yeah, you know we're be, you know how many you see it in all of their media. See, we're becoming we are becoming a synodal church. Oh, like I thought we were. What are the marks of the church? One holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And the symbolism you know? of unity is supposed to be in the Pope. Exactly. Our Lord didn't say go out and ask them what they think, and then and then we come back. You know, maybe it is, but I said the the, the amount of energy and publications and communications that they've put into this rebranding exercise to turn the Catholic Church into a synodal church, and then you're saying to me, "Oh, we're not. Nothing's changing." I mean, yeah. Uh, it's it's just the people that are pushing it. The people that are the are the are the left of the church. You know, they're the ones that are. Yes, we're synodal. We can be synodal. This and synodal that. And you know, you, sister, what's her name with her with her with her nineteen seventy style clothing? You know, n no no identity as a religious. Nothing. You know, uh, it's Father James Martin. You know that. Yeah, synodal this, and he's the advisor, and he's in there, and he's tweeting about it and he's pushing it and I said well think, okay but why don't you bring in say the superior of Institute of Christ the King or you know to give it a bit of balance why don't you why don't you bring in others that have other opinions the Bishop Snyder or something like oh no 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 vegan no, no. <laughs> I mean, not, I mean, vegan or okay, vegan or I, I, I can't even talk about him because it's uh, I I uh, I I think he lacks charity in, in some areas, but you know. Uh, and then with our creating bishops, you know the choices that that we've seen, uh, beggars belief. I mean, and then we're saying, oh no, no, holy father, ex, ex, what is going on? Like really, what is going on in the church? Uh, I, I I don't know. But anyway, mm. it, it can be. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of generalization there, but there's a lot of good happening as well. But it's the there case. Is. The tool of the devil is always the media, and if it's the case he gets to roar like they're lying in your face, you're only always going to hear him. It's the case of looking at the Lord who doesn't need the answer to anyone. He just speaks in the gentle whisper. You know that story yeah. of the cave. And when you look at what he's doing, especially under the surface, you'll see that things are coming about again 
to the point where he is going to step in, and I think that's why the illumination of conscience is so fitting. Years ago, I used to think, "Well, that sounds scary," or, "Or how could that come about, and why?" And we see now, I find it's very fitting. You know, I just want to say, you know, like I'm really focused the last few weeks with Our Lady as the new Ark of the Covenant. And see when you see back in the book of Joshua and stuff, again, I've already done a bit in the presentation and stuff, but um, you see the typology, you know, it's coming around again. And I think of Akita, yeah. the 101 tears of the first Eve, yeah. come around to the yeah. new Eve. It's the same with the yeah. old Ark to the new Ark, or ladies, the new Ark. And um, it was the Levite priests who carried the Ark over the Jordan, into the promised land. Who are the what's the bridge to the triumph, they say in Medjugorje? It's the priests. And yeah. I think it's the the Lord's mercy because when everything happens, that's what's going to it's not the Synod meetings, it's not the next youth group event. So these things are all good and I take part in things myself within the church. And when I'm together with people of faith and we're loving it, we're joyful, we're away from the bad stuff of the world because we're focused on faith, prayer, worship, holy mass, fellowship, everything there just is that the world could be burning around us and we wouldn't know because we're happy where we are and it's all for the Lord, it's all together with that love of faith and, and it's been an amazing few weeks and it always gives me that taste to know that this is what it's all about. And I, th I think of Our Lady as that Ark of the Covenant where she is leading us now. We need to stop looking back to Egypt, to the, the world, the old ways. We need to get ourselves cleansed of everything of the world, although we need to live in the world, but not be part of it. And I just find that it's not just what she began in Fatima, she fulfilled in Medjugorje. I'm actually looking back now to Guadalupe, Ruda back. Mm. I'm seeing why the Immaculate... Because I never really looked at Lourdes as part of the context until recent years. Like Fatima, Garabandal, Akita, Medjugorje, absolutely. Lourdes was like a place to go for the sick and that. But actually, there have been secrets that have been covered up that she gave to Bernadette and Lourdes as well. It's really? in Davies book. Yeah, yeah, there was five secrets. One, I think it was to do with the space and all this stuff, the space shuttles in the next century and science. And there was another one about, again, um, I think it was Fire from the Sky, which Angel at Fatima, a key to message, and years later, Fire, Fire. There's something, I need to look into it a bit more, but it's one I want to cover soon. But yeah, so again, it's getting me refocused in Lourdes. But she appeared there when Bernadette asked, what's your name? She didn't say Mary. She says, I am the Immaculate Conception. And I think what yeah. Dr. Peter Howard was saying and then quoting Maximilian Colby, etc., it was like, the Holy Spirit is the Immaculate Conception, the uncreated Immaculate Conception. Mary, who's now a spouse to the Holy Spirit, the created Immaculate Conception. And it's her identity in God that fulfills everything about her. And a godless society is having a, an identity crisis. And what yes. people need to wake up, as I keep saying, and yeah. find the Lord, find your true identity in the divine creator who de deliberately created you as you truly are. And forget all this nonsense of the world. But back in Guadalupe, the one who crushes the serpent, that was, I'm going to bring this slide up in a second because a friend Thomas got me onto this with Blena, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, who I've brought in many times like the two popes, prophecy, the split of the church, etc. She had a vision where Jesus was 31 years of age and he told the rabbis the year was 4,028 since Adam and the Egyptian calendars were wrong. He was teaching the Pharisees this in her vision and she was led to know that he was 31 and it was the year 4,028. Now, I know there's different calendars from the Jewish to the Gregorian, the Julian, but... Somewhere in there, not too much of a difference. If you think of two years later, he would have been suffering the passion, death, and then he would have had his resurrection at 33. So two years later, that would be 4,028 to 4,030, two years later. If that was the case, 
4013. We're getting into we're out of this old era, getting into the new era, which would bring us to 2030. We know 2030 is the Great Reset, and you think these Luciferian powers aren't aware of all this history, dates and calendars and stuff. But right, there's the fourth there's the 2030. What about 2029? Because I think Our Lady of Fatima says she'd come back and ask for the consecration. She did ask for it. She says now God wants it in 1929. And if it follows suit like the Sacred Heart request, it's a hundred years like it was with France. So that's why it takes us to 2029. So 2029 with the Fatima connection, 2030 with the vision of Anne Catherine Emmerich if we're working around about that calendar time. But then 2031, this is the slide, 2031, I should say 2030 first actually, I should have had that at the top, Rudy back in 1830, it'll be the 200th anniversary in 2030, and then the following year it'll be the 500th anniversary of Guadalupe in 2031, and it's also the 50th anniversary of Medjugorje in the same year. Now, what am I thinking there when I hear 50 years, it's like the new Pentecost. <laughs> so if we are off by a couple of years and it's not 2033, it might be like from the 29 to the 31. Now why am I blabbering on about this is because I just think the timing of when Sister Sasaga was passed away on this pivotal year, which we've seen in the prophetic timeline that we've all put together for some time, Xavier Al, who all his knowledge believes this is still a pivotal year, coincides with the big American election again with Trump in November. We're seeing the simmering coming from the pot with all these riots and division, the Islamification of Europe, everything prophesied is happening. We're at the end of Malachi's list of popes, we believe. It's the four popes of Garib and Dal. It's the prophesied two popes have had. Francis is in all of that, and he's still here. And then we're getting the synod and synodality. We're getting other things that the Garib and Dal names spoke about where things are going to happen will coincide. Everything's right before us now. We're in the last 20 odd years. I could never have seen that. But mm. I see it as clear as day now. Cle and now yeah. It's just a case of waiting. Is it going to be the end of this year or next year? What's going to happen 2026? I mean, the world is going to go on and on and on for a very long time, long after we're gone. But I think we're going to see some great biblical events if the Lord spares us to live an average lifespan in our countries here. What do you think? Yeah. I, it's, I, I suppose, uh, you know, prophecy has to be understood in its in its proper sphere and you know there's there's not always does it does it accomplish itself the way we think so you know the the uh, the jews viewed the messiah thought that christ would be a, uh, an actual earthly king and they actually want to make him king uh, you know and he said my kingdom isn't of this world and and they kind of that kind of shook a lot of them that were expecting him to do one thing, you know, to get rid of the Romans too. And he said, no, I'm not, he, you know, the Romans could sleep in their beds. He wasn't coming. He didn't come to create a war. So sometimes some of these things that we see coming, um, uh, you know, we have to, we have to understand them in the proper context. Like 200 years ago, there was a meteor shower from from um, on on the earth, and it was so it was so as you can look it up, it was so well recorded that it looked like fire was raining from the sky. You know, the sky was alight with, with, with meteors, um, but but obviously it wasn't uh, it wasn't the end of the world, but a lot of people thought it was. So, you know, we have to be careful about putting all of our our of our, 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 our um, energy and faith into something that might happen. But mm. then again, we we can't ignore the science. You know, we can't ignore the science. Like uh, uh, all of the statistics. In the yeah, Catholic that's Church. why I keep looking at it again. I try and focus on scripture and rosaries and these fellowship meetings and prayer groups and have a happy life in God. I really do. But all of yeah. a sudden, it's like there's another one. <laughs> I know. I mean, who 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 would have thought? Who would have thought? 
you know, in the life of your church, that you would see Fiducia supplicants coming out the next day, a Jesuit, he, a member of the Vatican communication team, uh, would be blessing two gay men holding hands, you know, blessing their marriage, as he said. Um, I mean, would, would our Lord have done this? Would the apostles have done this? Well, that's what I keep thinking. Of... If Paul and Peter were in the Vatican that day or in the church that day, what would be happening? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and I and I can't see any of the apostles taking a Pachamama and putting it on a blanket and then, you know, sitting back there as people marched around it and then prostrating their head towards it. You know, yeah. Protestants Protestants accuse us of, of worship when we when and, and when we put our lady or if we kneel I mean, we don't even do many like Mark, let's be honest. Most Catholics don't even do that for the Eucharist. You know, <laughs> some people don't even go in past the tabernacle and they can't even genuflect. And yet there we are. I'm sorry. Just before COVID, right before COVID, 2019, with that charade in the Vatican. And I, and how you can rationalize this as good for the life of the church, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And then we go off with this rebranding exercise and synodality. We're a synodal church. We're becoming a syn No, we're, we're Catholic church, you know. <laughs> One holy Catholic and apostolic. Synodal doesn't enter there. And mm. so... I think we've, yeah, I think back in August for me there was such a clear conviction I've never forgotten. It tr and having a ruckus myself after seminary with the faith and anger and everything else. When I was back in Medjugorje last August, it was all back again. It was all good, the peace yeah. and the love. But there was something new, and I've been in Medjugorje a few times now, but this one, what I received this time with such utter, absolute conviction, it's all or nothing. And, I, yeah. and I, since then to now, there's been graces that have been happened for sure. I'll, I'll share with you off camera, maybe it's, it's personal and things, but great graces and a, a personal spiritual battles and other things. And that conviction really was something sincere. And I, I find myself... Not losing patience, but being less tolerable with those who are opposing the faith or even attacking the faith. Why am I the one that needs to bend backwards for you? No, if the apostles bent backwards, they wouldn't have been martyred. Neither would Christ yeah. on the cross. Yeah. They spoke yeah. the truth to the end. And I think Cardinal Burke's come up with that about being preparing for martyrdom, if it's the case. You know, martyrdom never came to my mind until the past 12 months. Just yeah. a few times, it's not on my mind all the time, but a few times, in, any time in my life, only the past 12 months. And the question I've got for myself, and when I, I think over is, do I love him enough to go the whole way? Yeah. To have the courage to go the whole way? Because although my confirmation name is Peter... I don't want to say I'll go all the way to the death for you, Lord, because the, you go in your own human strength, you're going to end up going like Peter. <laughs> it's know, about the love and, um, well, again, he had the Holy Spirit in the end, so we've got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But yeah. I, I want to know if we love him enough, and how do we get to love him enough? I mean, the simple term would be love the faith, love their lady's messages, but how do we grow in love more and more? And yeah. maybe with that, Robert, could you answer? Because I think it was touched on it. When she says in Akita, the signs that left with you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Some of them believe that sign is like the Eucharist or maybe the brown sky. I mean, I'm thinking, well, why not the permanent signs? Because if they have to be there till the end of the world and all these events, like Akita seems to be like at the end with the big chastisement then it's like, surely the sign left by my son would be like the permanent, indestructible signs, miraculous signs. But you were saying it might be something else. I, I mean, I, I, I've been reading, re, I've been reading the Valtorta Enigma, um, reading Maria Valtorta's work, but on the, not focusing so much about the story, but all of the different signs that are in it. So she mentions a mirage of places. Uh, topography, uh, food, 
lunar cycles. Uh, so, uh, and uh, with with computers today, <laughs> we couldn't have done this years ago. But we're when you when you mention, oh, it's the it's the month of uh, the Jewish month. Uh, the different it's the month it's the it's the month of X, and it's a full moon. Well, then you can locate it more or less to um, to a specific day. And, uh, you know, she's very, in, it's very interesting, you know, they talk about setting out on a trip on the lake uh, sh uh, after midnight when the moon was uh, like this and then arriving at another place and then the moon was setting. And you can go back and look at the setting, look at the angles and look at how the, the, the everything and, 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 and see, well, look, this, this is, this kind of makes sense. Um, uh, given the science that we're able to do. Um and why is our Lord doing that? You know, why leave so many signs in that book? You know, because he even says to Maria, when when you're writing this, pay attention to the details. So she's describing tons of details in it. Um, um, like what the house is like, the terraces, the where it is, the roads, so, um, way po um, stone um, posts along different ways, different walks, where Christ went, the different towns, um, and a lot of these, some of these weren't in the Bible, and they weren't even known to her at the time. We know them now because of archaeology. But there's a lot that we wouldn't have known. It's it's. I would say, Mark, to be honest, we have we have adulterated the gospel to such an extent. We've adulterated the faith. We don't actually believe in the apostolic faith that, that, that Christ left us. You know, Christ was constantly talking about conversion, metanoia. Uh, you know, he, he, we see him as this all merciful, he forgave everybody, he ate with sinners, he ate with prostitutes and so forth. He was very tough on people that uh, that uh, d didn't believe in his message, you know, and you can read it. He wasn't this hippie 1970s figure that we've turned him into in the church. You know, he was, he was just, he was, he was right, you know, uh, and I and I firmly agree that when you look at the science of of the poem, it's a sign for our times. It's a sign. Listen to Christ. This is how he preached. What's the what's the Christ that you hear preached in the church today? You, you hardly hear it. You know, you, you if if we even bother, we don't call people back to the faith you know we don't call people back to repentance we we don't call people back to defend the unborn or the elderly um you know we don't we don't rally the, our, our leaders our pastors are 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 most of them are asleep anybody that puts their head above their parapet you know they get the call from the bishop don't be going rocking the boat be careful here you know so um it's um it's definitely something that uh, i would i would contest is a sign for our times um yeah. but there's lots of, there's lots of people studying it mark there's lots of people around the church that have taken the poem of the man called and says hold on a second this isn't a romanticized novel of our lord uh there's there's uh, and they're stepping back and they're saying uh, there's too much in here you know that it's divinely it's supernaturally inspired. There is no doubt whatsoever that it's supernaturally inspired. This woman could not have written that uh, that book without without supernatural assistance. Now, whether if if it's divinely inspired or or it's demonically inspired, that's the question that people are asking themselves. Uh, you know, if it's this, if it's the demon, if it's Satan, well, why would he do this? You know, because yeah. you know. Well, I can add more to that then, because that's the poem of the man god by Maria Valtorta. Torta, Maria Valtorta. Maria Valtorta, yeah. the poem of the man god. I know they're in PDF forms. You can get them online in PDFs. Uh, Father Leon promotes it at Medjugorje. Apparently, yeah. 
Was it Medjugorje where Our Lady, out with the scriptures, the only other book she's ever recommended to read was the poem of the Man God? Yeah. As far as I've been told. Um, but when you're saying, is it demonically done or is it divinely done? My friend, Nicky, married a, a Spanish gentleman and his, he's friends with the famous Spanish exorcist priest who years ago, before YouTube, we had the DVD going out there, you know, an yeah. interview with an exorcist. He's friends with that priest and he told me years ago that the poem of the man god he reads a little page every day and as soon as it's done he's back to the start every day so i've, I've yeah. an exorcist his first phd exorcist and with all the experience in the years that he's done i'm sure he ain't getting it done wrong why and he's reading it um, yeah. something i want to look at I've, I've known of the book for years and years like a lot of things and it's getting around to doing it I'm, I'm my yeah. worst enemy for that. But uh, Mer, uh, Mother Teresa read it. She used to carry three books: her Bible, her Breviary, and the Poem of the Man God. Yeah, well, if our lady's recommending it after the scriptures, then plus the others, then it's, it's something we should probably look into. But I know we've been on for a good hour. We never had a real set think... plan, Robert, in terms of what we're talking about. But I think we're covering a point where. We want to show our witness to the fact that we love God, we love the church, we see things are going a bit wrong, but at the same time, I just think timings such as Sister Sasagawa passing, coincidentally in the same week as Louisa Picaretta's stuff going forward now, coincidentally in the year 2024, after everything that's been done in this channel through and through, with other mystics and apparitions pointing all to now, it's like they say that... I keep forgetting the Latin saying, as we approach the end, things speed up. And we're talking about the end of the old era coming into the new era. And it's that ruckus that we're getting until the new era takes over. But I think, I really do believe in that the remainder, the remainder of this decade, um, shortly into the next one, we're going to see a lot more. And I think more than ever, we need to be truly enriched in our faith our true faith, our catechesis, praying the rosary, knowing that the efficacy of it is more powerful now than ever, according to Lucia Fatima, for these times. Yeah. The fact that the saints looked ahead in their visions and saw what was coming, and saw the great graces that were coming, they wanted to be alive as we are alive, and I keep holding on to that. But love, yeah. love, love. And, and again, when the cardinals are opposing cardinals and bishops are opposing bishops, that's because there's many faithful in there. We'll be protesting to keep the faith within the church yep. against the false church. And, you know, I interviewed a lady yesterday for the uh, Isabel von Spruce. She was a lady that's been arrested twice for silently, mentally praying uh, over here in England, and she was won a legal battle for it. And um, she's saying five bishops will be at the March for Life talking this year, including yeah. a good friend of mine, Bishop John Keenan, who's a great witness for it all. Um, Why only five? I know, I mean, I don't know, but five are coming, and he's been doing it for a number of years on his own. So the fact that four more, and a couple of weeks ago, I met another bishop down here of England, and up the back... We had like some music, you know, and like praise and worship. It was a charismatic event that we were doing the music for. And if I get a chance to play the drums, I'll do it. But you see the bishop up the back praising the Lord. Then he's yeah. in the front a few hours later for mass, preaching beautifully. He's a good apple, you know. Yeah. And uh, a couple, the couple of priests that came as well. I, I think people, including them, they're getting a sense now that something's in the mix. Something's happening. Mm -hmm. It's going to rock our comfort soon enough. And yeah. I'm seeing how chaotic even my own parish has become. It's so full of joyful people and so many new faces doing their parts. But I remember growing up for many, many years, it was good old Canon Walsh, great Irishman of Cork. I was an altar boy for years and everything. And um, he never just had a grip in the parish, he had a grip in the village in a way mm. Hands of the priest, you better watch what's being said about you and watch yourself, <laughs> watch how you go and things. 
But when he went away there last 10, 15 years, and we've had three parish priests since, a silent reverent church has now became a chaotic, noisy church. And the priest that's there now is a younger priest. I was in seminary with him, uh, you're behind me even. And I was just joking, I said, some riot here. I said, oh, I'd rather have them in here than out there. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I get it. I'm, I'm not criticising them, but I'm just, well, it stayed with me afterwards. And I'm like, but surely when you get them in there, you want them to be reverent. You want them to know who they're before. Because if the Pope was sitting there or King Charles was sitting there, there'd be silence. There was, Why not the King of Kings and the Tabernacle? And there's a lot more coming to the Mass there now, I think, since it's... What, what's the attraction to the newer priests and not with the older priests? Is it because the old priest was a bit too strict with the truth of the faith and teachings? I don't think the newer ones are going against that, but yeah. there's something I'm not quite getting. And see if I had to talk to them about the stuff I've covered in the channel with... It, like, clearly signs from heaven are these apparitions and what everything's happening and why it's happening I think they'd look at me as if I had two heads I think so <laughs> you know and it's like it does say the majority will go that way yeah that's the yeah. sad thing yeah. but I'm seeing myself more and more getting ready mentally the fact is well if I need to just go underground for my faith or if I need to slowly move towards the like the proper trad side because I see it's them that's getting hurt now with the church. Yeah. I see it's yeah. them that's getting persecuted more. And I see it's yeah. them that's holding on to the faith of all the years of the church fathers to the popes. The popes that gave us the Immaculate Conception dogma and the like Pope Pius the Ninth or Pope Leo the Thirteenth. These were they wrong back then, or were they just not aware of the future and how God may change things? Yeah. Now, this is the stuff where I'm at right now. But everything yeah. I see happening, where's that bit in Scripture that says, when you see these things come to pass, let it stand to, as testimony? Yeah. And, and when I see so many things coming together, the timing they're coming, it's not because I'm focused, at, like, like you say, prophecy can change, but so far it doesn't look like it's changing. It's all coming together as it's been described. Yeah. And that's what's making me realise it testifies to the fact that people don't make this up. Multiple people over the centuries who never had technology and didn't know one another and never knew of one another are all bringing this together in context. And that's why I, I find it hard to ignore. Although it's yeah. not my main aim, it's difficult to ignore. And I think we're yeah. in very, very exciting times, very um, decisive times. Make your decision, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I'll give you the last word, uh, brother. I know we're for the back back. Uh, I I have to run now. It's uh, it's nine. But uh, I, I I I look. Know your faith, and just ask the questions you know what's what is happening you know and i think we can be charitable and just saying guys what is going on here you know when we see well i think we're bringing a chastisement on ourselves by by turning away from god's gospel you know and i think uh, the church has to has to realize that and and be strong in in preaching the gospel so and not a fake counterfeit watered down compromised message that really what what does it do to the world uh, at the end of the day we're we're as good as 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 our politicians who do the exact same I, I i don't know if you saw donald trump there you know he's he's really watered down the pro-life said oh it's a state issue it's a state issue you know he doesn't want they don't even want to talk about it and i said wow you know but yeah, what can you expect you know politicians are politicians i think we should stand for the yeah. truth um, but anyway yeah for sure but uh, like uh, he ain't the savior at the end of the day it was a great hope that maybe he was the voice for his within politics but then you've got yeah. another cardinal going to the other one and abortions are happening a few hundred feet away from him and he's there talking I know. so I, d I don't know what to make of that <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, I'm not, I wasn't here. I don't like, and I'm not anti-Francis or anything like that. Just to be clear for the record, like I've said many times, when I mention the Pope, I'm talking the figurehead of what's been said in quotes. I'm not speaking of Pope Francis. Literally, I'm just on about from prophecy point because we don't know what, if his immediate successor comes. If he does, I'll begin back to the drawing board to kind of work out because there's this question over Petrus Romanus and then um, mm. there's a couple others where it was like there was a pause in between prophecies about the popes of this era and stuff. So there's a question mark over it now, but heaven's keeping us in suspense. <laughs> yeah. But at we're the same time, happens. we're getting everything. We're getting everything mm. with grace. And, yeah. yeah, like August, I was saying there, full conviction, it's all or nothing. It's not 99%, it's not 80%, it's at least 100% and then some. No pick and mix Catholicism, no watered down Catholicism, no football type style Celtic Catholicism that we know from Ireland and Scotland. It has to be 100% one holy Catholic and apostolic church that type of Catholicism and um, please God we get the grace to see it through for now and for always but yeah let's maybe just finish with a very quick glory be then glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning. It's now, it's and now and ever sure I'll be right world without 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 end. End. Amen Robert it's been a pleasure it's been too long hopefully get you back again soon God bless God bless take care take care